Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. How are you today? Great, thanks. Everybody Come does on. know that it's your birthday, so you can't hide. Oh, all right. <laughs> oh people are saying happy birthday already. All right, already. I knew that was going to happen. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for uh, your well wishes. Someone say, how old are you now? <laughs> 22. Oh. Yeah. That's the best because Taylor Swift has a song called 22. I'm feeling 22. Oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so today we're going to be talking about a lady who had lost about 160 pounds. Pretty an amazing achievement. So this is up on YouTube. This is a patient on the table. Uh, face up. This is her tummy Good before, morning. after. Good morning. So today we have a wonderful patient, originally from Texas, but uh, she's in her mid-30s and she had lost 116 pounds. Yay, fantastic. And she lost it with a uh, diet called Brightline. Basically, it's no sugar, no fake sugar, and no flour. So great. So no sugar, no flour. Imagine trying to get flour out of your diet. So you got to look at all the ingredients and get rid of flour. So that's how she lost all this weight. Diet definitely works. Here she is. Her weight's been stable. She's kept it off. And she's going to keep it off. But with that weight loss comes the residual excess skin and a little bit excess fat. Not much fat, but excess skin, primarily of the tummy, hips, and buttocks, and the inner thighs. So to get rid of the tummy, hips, and buttocks, what we're going to do is a 360 all the way around, circumferential, again, all the way around, lower body lift. So that entails a tummy tuck, a hip lift reduction, and a buttock lift reduction. Basically, I'm removing sort of an inner tube from the lower body. Um, it goes from hip to hip all the way around. I'm also going to be doing a vertical longitudinal medial thigh lift with liposuction, which entails liposuction the inner thigh and then an incision from the groin down to the knee to get rid of all this loose hanging skin. So she really didn't like the excess skin and fat of the upper third of the thigh, middle third of the upper thigh, and lower third of the upper thigh, pretty much down to the knee. So when I see you in consultation for the thigh lift, I'm going to ask you, you know, does the skin and fat around the knee bother you? And if it does, you may need either isolated liposuction in that area, or as in this case, and is most common in my practice, incision from the groin to the knee. More dieting, any more exercising, is it going to make the skin more loose? It's not going to tighten up with further weight loss. Uh, she weighs about 150. 50 pounds now for the weight loss is just going to lead to more hanging skin. So let's go to the operating room and I'll show you. Yeah, so we get that a lot from physical trainers, uh, maybe dietitian, uh, my dietitians, uh, nutritionists, etc. that say, oh, you know, you just need to lose more weight. Well, she lost so much weight, that skin's not going to bounce back. No matter what she does, no matter what exercise she does, no matter what uh, nutritional plan she follows, that skin is not going to bounce back, whatever you do. Do a combined 360 circumferential lower body lift, vertical medial thigh lift with thigh liposuction on a patient that lost about 116 pounds. All right, so good morning. How are you feeling today? Good morning. I'm really excited. A little what? bit nervous, but mostly excited. Yay, and what brings you here? So today I'm getting a lower body lift, a 360 circumferential lower body lift and a thigh reduction. And how did you find Dr. Katzen? I found Dr. Katzen on realself.com. Uh, he was easily like the top doctor for massive weight loss, loose skin removal surgeries. Tell us about your weight loss journey. What made you decide to lose weight? Oh, I just, I, I was really comfortable as a plus size person, but it got to a point where health wise, it, I was comfortable aesthetically, but my body was not comfortable medically, so it was for health reasons. Um, and I found Brightline Eating, which is no sugar, no flour. Um, I started that about two years ago, and I've lost 100, over 115 pounds in not even two. So bright line, no sugar, no artificial sugar, and especially no flour. So, yeah. That's amazing, congratulations. Thank you. And was it difficult for you to start Brightline Eating? I mean, it's difficult to start any sort of eating program. We're not eating processed foods. It's not very easy because I can't just go out to any fast food restaurant and find food. But it's totally worth it to take control of your health like that and to, to, to make that choice for yourself. What differences do you feel health-wise? Oh my gosh, my blood pressure is no longer scary high numbers. Um, like I can get up and do, I just feel the energy to not sit on the couch and watch TV all day. I just, if I sit for too long, I wanna get up and do something. And so it's really great to just feel that I have that energy in me. That's amazing. And did you expect excess skin after this? You know, I was kind of hoping not to have excess skin. I knew I had a lot of weight to lose, but I was kind of like, oh, I'm still in my 30s. Maybe my skin will bounce back. 
And it did a little bit, but not all the way. <laughs> but at least yeah. you knew there were- So she's young, she's healthy, she had lost a lot of weight, and the skin had bounced back a lot, but not 100%. Options, right? Yes, yes. So I, I knew that there were loose skin surgeries and I had done a lot of research because I realized fairly early on into my eating plan that loose skin was going to be an issue for me. And so I had been researching loose skin surgeries for quite some time. About how long do you think? Oh, just, it's, I think not even six months after I started my eating program, I had lost maybe 60, 70 pounds by then. And I was like, oh no, this is gonna be a problem. My skin isn't bouncing back. But it's, it's good to know that there are options like the lower body lifts and there's like arm, the brachioplasty, the arm lift. There's so many great options for this loose skin. And it's not the end of the world. It's no reason not to change your life and change your health. Like loose skin is just a part of life. And some people live with their loose skin and they're super happy with it. But for me, like I'm young, I want to go out and wear a bikini and feel very confident in it. So I wanted my loose skin gone. Yay, well, we're so excited for you. And you seem very mentally prepared for this surgery too. Yeah, I think it's because I've been <laughs> preparing for it for so long. Nice, and so far has everything gone smooth with all your office visits, your consultations and everything? Yes, totally. So Dr. Katzen and his team, they've given me all of the paperwork I need, all of the information. I feel very like well-informed about the decision I'm making, but also about the surgery and the recovery afterward it, it all feels uh, very well I feel very well informed about it and very ready okay well let's do this and we'll check in with you after the surgery great okay thank you so much <laughs> so I made my incision over the uh, top portion of the hip here so now we're in the operating room and patients face down, general anesthesia completely asleep. I use a board certified MD doctor anesthesiologist. They monitor the uh, anesthesia gases, make sure the patient's completely asleep, doesn't feel anything. And what I do is I start out on the back side. Some patients, uh, some surgeons start out on the front side, some, patient, uh, some surgeons start out on the side. Basically I start out on the back and I make an incision in the top of the buttock and dissect down. You'll see here in a minute. And uh, I'm just controlling the bleeding with the uh, cautery here. And, uh, going the cautery is kind of an interesting uh, instrument. We always get asked about it. That's this uh, yellow thing with this uh, blue tip. Basically, it's like a pen. It's attached to an electrical cord, which goes into the uh, machine. And then there's a counter pad on the patient's thigh. And when you complete the circuit by touching the button on the pencil, and then you touch that tip to the patient, it completes the circuit and causes a spark where they meet. The spark elicits heat and then heat coagulates or stops the bleeding by thermal properties. Down to the rectus of the <laughs> Going straight down to the uh, gluteus maximus muscle. Ooh, that's a bingo. Hmm. Uh, and the fascia. I gotta talk to my and film editor about that. Fascia. I'm not <laughs> sure about that. Uh, anyway. Oh. This is the patient's favorite band. Oh, okay. So don't talk right. to anyone. <laughs> oh, okay. Fair enough. And I happen this to is, love it too. <laughs> this is BTS for those of you that don't know. They're sort of taking over the world. Taking over the so world. So I've anyway. done the uh, patient's left side. And now I'm uh, trying to mirror things on the right side. Again, I made my incision high and I'm going low on the butt. I'm down on the rectus. The rectus is on the front, so the patient is on the back, and this is the gluteus maximus muscle, the uh, buttock muscle. For this patient here, so she has some volume to the buttock, but I'm dissecting down uh, to the buttock here to get her um, even with the other side. You can see how low I went down here, almost to the intragluteal fold. You can see my marking. That's what I wanted to resect. I just dissected it down to there, and I wouldn't get this nice big pull that I'm going to get. So what I wanted to get out is to this lower line here. You can see that. But to get that piece out, I got to go all the way down here to loosen up the buttock so I can get that piece out. But here on this side, I'm not quite... So it's not like we just dissect from here to here. No, we dissect all the way down to here. Or I do. So we're just dissecting the way. So I'm not trying to pull the buttock up as tightly as we possibly can because I want to maintain some of the volume for her. So we're just going to pull it up enough to get her shrinkles gone from this uh, 100 plus pound of this. Right 
What I'm doing here with the towel clamps is estimating the amount of skin that I can resect. So my original black line was somewhere up here. With the further dissection, you can get even more. So that's this new purple line here where I'm taking out more skin. The towel clamps are laid down so I can feel the tension between it. Is it too tight? Then I need to take less skin. Is it too loose? Well, then I need to take more skin and readjust the towel clamp. So I made my incision across the top. I dissected down to the gluteus maximus muscle, dissected here evenly on both sides, not quite to the infragluteal fold, but almost uh, to it, making sure my dissection is equal on both sides. So what I'm doing here is I'm feeling with my hands to make sure it's equal on both sides. You don't want to be further down on this side and not as far on this side, but with your hands you can guesstimate exactly where you need to be, and so it's perfectly symmetrical. So we'll get a nice even pull from both sides, make sure there's minimal bleeding, and then uh, make sure we went a little bit around the hips, and that will allow me to remove and excise this area like that, pulling this area like a pair of loose pajamas or a loose pair of pants. And what I predict we can resect is from this line down to this line. So if someone's interested in the consultation, are you doing them virtually or in person? Uh, depends. We would love to do them in person, but if it's hard to get to LA, maybe you're coming from another state or outside the country, we can do it virtually. Or if you're in LA and don't want to fight the traffic, we can do it virtually. But we would prefer to do it physically, but uh, virtually may be easier for the initial. So this is right over the tailbone. This is the uh, coccygeal region, the uh, lower area of the uh, low back. And here we don't want to take out too much excess skin and fat. Most of the excess skin and fat is over the uh, lateral half of the buttock and over the hip. So now I'm making my incision over that new purple line there over the amount of skin that I want to resect. The yellow orange is fat, so here we have the skin, and then the uh, orangey yellow is fat, and then deeper down you have the red tissue, uh, which is the fascia, which is that layer on top of the muscle, and in this case, the gluteus maximus muscle on the backside. There's that cautery machine. You can see the uh, the spark that's at the tip. Muscle. All right, done. All right. Got it so, out of your system. Uh, I made my incision. I did my dissection. Uh, we pulled up the flap, and I'm just going to close this in multiple layers. I'm going to use this drain here. Uh, the drain uh, removes uh, fluid, uh, specifically serous fluid, blood, and any other accumulation of uh, anything else, and uh, then goes out the drain. Uh, we also have this excess skin and fat here, and instead of just cutting it in here. Well, the problem with that is if I just cut it here, all the blood in the flap will then be uh, wasted. So the patient will lose that blood. So instead, we recycle the blood by using this tourniquet. And you may have seen me use this on the arms, but in this case, we're exsanguinating. We're getting rid of the blood. See what I so what this does is by starting at the tip and then going towards the patient, I'm milking the blood. I'm forcing the blood that's in this flap back into the patient so we don't lose as much blood if we were just to cut that off. All the blood is pushed uh, further down this way back into the patient's circulation. So now I'm just going to insert... So that squeezed all the blood from there back into the patient. And your patients don't usually need blood transfusions during Yeah, this. it's exceedingly rare that we need to do any blood transfusions. Drain and uh, close this in multiple layers. So we're done uh, with the uh, backside of the uh, 360 circumferential lower body. That was before, that's after. I raised the buttock up, I reduced the buttock, lifted the buttock, lifted the backside of the hips. And I think she has an excellent shape. The scar is fairly low here, that's how we want it, that's how she wanted it. These were attached, they are now released, and I made my incision. So let's go to the front side. So now we're just going to flip her over and do the front side. Bariatric Pro says happy birthday, Dr. Pro. Oh, thank you. Thank Dr. you, Bariatric Pro. Ahmed said you're amazing. Thank oh. you for sharing, doctor. Thank you, Dr. Ahmed.
Uh, Thanks for watching. asking what the average recovery for a 360 is. Average recovery is maybe about two or three weeks. Really depends on your surgery, your uh, activities of daily living, and maybe your job. Um, if you have a sitting type job, maybe you're back to work at about maybe the two or three week mark. But if you have a very physically active uh, job, maybe you're back to work at maybe like a month or six weeks. If you're like uh, in the medical field where you're a nurse or a physician assistant, etc., or maybe even a vet where you have to lift people and move people, maybe even uh, do uh, cardiac arrest and CPR and stuff like that, that we need to make sure you're 100% before you go back to work. So those lines of work, maybe you need to take off about four to six weeks uh, to recover to before turning back to work. So we're on the front side here. This is the pubic region. Okay. So I start out on the pubic region and go laterally towards the hip. So in the pubic region, we have a couple of things. We have uh, some major vessels, two major vessels on each side here, which we take care of. There's always a little bit of bleeding there, male and female. Uh, typically, males have larger vessels. Typically, uh, larger patients have bigger vessels. But we and nonetheless get rid of two vessels there, two vessels there. And then as we come down to the pubic region, you'll see this large mound of fat that's just underneath the skin on males and females, which we take care of by uh, directly excising. Uh, yeah, so I made my incision across the top of the mon pubic region, uh, the fupa region. Uh, so this is the belly button. This is the uh, pubic region for orientation and we're going up. And uh, dissected down mm -hmm. to the rectus abdominis muscle. Here's the fascia. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Uh, here's this white part here, which is the fascia, nice and clean. And uh, we're going to dissect clear up to the belly button. Lots of words. Fascia basically is the layer on top of muscle. It's that white filmy layer. But um, before we get there, we're going to probably have to release these laterals here. I do this to maximize blood flow to the area. Media CEO said, happy birthday, Dr. Captain. Oh. It was like me working on your birthday. I admire you being here and taking care of your patients. Oh, thank you, Media CEO. Thanks for watching. So you got a glimpse of the belly button there. And uh, what I've done before this clip is I made a little incision around the belly button and you'll see that belly button in a minute. Now I'm making an incision from the pubic region up to the six o'clock position on the belly button. I'm splitting the flap so I can get access to the upper portion of the uh, abdomen. If you don't split the flap, it makes the surgery more difficult because you're retracting. Don't try this at home. So now you can see the belly button there. It's sort of isolated, uh, and I do that to maintain its blood supply. The blood supply to the uh, skin around the belly button comes from underneath, comes around from this fatty little area. So you can see this little cuff of fat around the uh, belly button there. That preserves the blood supply to the belly button. So if you take too much fat there, if you take too much of the uh, blood supply, the belly button can die, either completely or even partially. So you need to leave a nice, healthy uh, vascular stock or blood supply to the belly button. Hi, Dr. Rahea. Thanks for watching. So now we are at the belly button there and we're drawing our midline. So this is six o'clock on the belly button going down to the pubic symphysis, the top of the pubic bone uh, in the uh, mons or the pubic region. And I'm establishing the midline. This is uh, methylene blue, dissolvable ink. We use this all the time to mark out uh, internal structures. Now I'm marking out the lateral border of the rectus abdominis muscle. And what I do is I curve it down to the pubic symphysis there, sort of like a football or an ellipse, and curve it up to the uh, sternum there. You can't bring it straight down uh, to parallel the muscle, because if you uh, suture the muscle together, you're going to wind up with dog ears or pooches of the muscle that stick out at each corner. So that's why we taper it down like that, and we don't bring it just straight down. Richie said this is my favorite part. Ah, thanks for watching, Richie. Yeah, my, sort of my favorite part, too. Uh, you I can have, uh, in it up to the, uh, instantly in one stitch, you can see the waistline really get snatched and really come in really quickly. 
bottom of this sternum. But you got to realize it probably takes about maybe three or four hours to get to this point. So it takes a little bit of time to prep it. I've located the six-pack muscle, rectus abdominis muscle, paired muscle structure which goes from the bottom of the rib cage down to the uh, pelvic bone, and I've found the laxity in the muscle, I've outlined the lateral border of the muscle, and now I'm injecting Marcaine for pain control postoperatively, and next we're going to placate or bring that muscle together with these permanent sutures and a two-layer closure. This is in every which way and backwards, but for me this just gets the tightest closure. I use a two-layer closure system, a permanent suture, not dissolvable, absorbable, and I first use a figure of eight buried suture with ethabon, this is this green suture, in an interrupted fashion. Why do we do interrupted? Well, if the patient uh, brusts or breaks one of these sutures, you're not going to lose the whole uh, abdominoplasty rectus plication. I guess, well, not I guess, I know you can possibly break one of these sutures with enough lifting or or enough force and uh, you can pop one of these sutures but I've never had a patient who pops all of these stitches and I do a two-layer closure just uh, to add further strength uh, and by doing the suture that way the knot is underneath the fascia so it's not sticking out it's underneath the fascia so it's buried to the abdominal closure we call it a buried figure of eight suture because the knot is buried you can do a no-layer closure. Yeah, that's fine. That's like not doing anything to the muscle. It's not going to give a great result. You can do a one-layer closure. Yeah, that's okay. Now, some plastic surgeons do, don't placate the muscle, and uh, I'm not sure why. Well, I, I am. A lot of plastic surgeons don't placate the muscle because they don't want their patient to have pain postoperatively with their tummy tuck. So, you know, most patients are willing to exchange some pain for results. So if you want the best results from a tummy tuck, usually the muscle placation is uh, required and is a necessary part of the procedure. In uh, my weight loss patients, I think it's essential. But I believe a two-layer closure is the best. So this spot was at 12 o'clock above the belly button. So this spot was going to come to the top of the pubic region, and now I'm just getting rid of the excess skin and fat over sort of the hip region, lateral hip. So there was an area of skin that went from the belly button here all the way down to the pubic region. So that line used to be sort of down in there. And by the dissection, we've freed up all the connective tissue so we can redrape the skin. <clears throat> So note for all the surgeons out there, I use scissors here because if you use the cautery, it's a lot of thermal energy. You're going to get some skin burns and some areas that may break down. So I find it a lot faster and quicker and safer actually to use the scissors to cut through this and then come back secondarily uh, to cauterize any uh, areas that are bleeding. Uh, before uh -huh. yeah. Brenda's asking question, how do you feel or how do you deal with patients on blood thinners while doing any kind of procedures? Yeah, all my patients are on blood thinners. Okay, so they're placed on blood thinners before the surgery and they continue the blood thinners for about two weeks uh, after the surgery, depending on the patient, maybe even longer. Uh, so yeah, definitely blood thinners. Now we're talking about Lovenox uh, as a blood thinner pro for prophylaxis for preventative, maybe developing blood clots. But if you're on a blood thinner, like maybe Eliquis or Coumadin, stuff like that. For other reasons, we need to get you off that uh, before we do any, uh, especially surgery like this. And Auntie Bonnie and Chantel both say happy birthday, Dr. Kathy. Hi, thanks for your well wishes, thanks. <laughs> So there's the, uh, there's the specimen off from the patient's uh, right side, and now we're just reapproximating from the mons top of the pubic region out over to the hip. So you can see how the skin is sort of coming together. left hip, this is her left hip bone right there, and so the incisions come from the buttock, 
Uh, that's where we ended it. There's our drain from the backside, and now we're going to come across to the pubic region. So now basically I'm going to bring these areas together, like that, and I'm just going to advance these tau plants piecemeal, always advancing towards the center there, leaving the pressure on the incision, something like that, and then this center point here, right into the middle. So you can see we have a nice sweep as it comes out over the hip into the pubic region, and uh, a really nice hourglass shape to it. So I'm just going to put in another drain here, so she's going to have a total of four drains for the body lift, and uh, then once everything is closed, I'll pop out the belly lift and it should so two drains on the front, two drains on the back side. So you can see with the muscle plication, we get her nice and flat. And by advancing the flap from the hip towards the center of the pubic region, we can also get sort of this hourglass shape. And then the belly button's really gonna suck in the anterior abdominal wall to give her a more of a concavity or an indentation of her anterior abdominal wall. Right about there. So now, pretty much we're gonna do the thigh lift. I use liposuction. I think it's an important component to the thigh lift. It debulks the leg, it gets rid of fat, helps with the dissection. Now I'm making my incision on the anterior or the upside of the thigh, and then I'm going to dissect on the inner portion of the thigh. So here I'm dissecting through the skin, through the fat. Now uh, this is the uh, groin, this is the knee, this is the lower extremity. So I've gone down to the fascia layer above the quadriceps muscle and then dissected posteriorly on the inner portion of the thigh. Now I'm using my towel clamps to measure the tension in the flap and measuring how much skin I can remove. Pretty good amount of skin. So here I'm going from one towel clamp to the next with my incision to making sure there's not too much tension in the incision. This is one removed from the inner thigh. Again, on stretch, it's about the width of my hand from the uh, inner thigh. That's including liposuction. Yeah, 360 circumferential lower body lift, including the buttock lift, hip lift and reduction, and uh, extended tummy tuck. And combine that with thigh liposuction and a vertical medial thigh lift with an incision from the groin down to the knee. So I think she looks really good. Nice flat abdomen, nice centered belly button, no overhang in the pubic region. Pubic region is not too high, not too low. And uh, in the uh, for the thigh lift, again, the incision starts at the upper inner thigh where the thigh uh, joins the groin uh, down to the knee. She had a moderate amount of excess skin and fat on the inner thigh and took out about the width of my hand there uh, on both sides all the way down. And on the tummy, uh, all the skin and fat from just above the pubic region to the belly button is gone. And uh, there we are. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe. We'll see you next time. So this is 40 hours after surgery of the recovery Yeah, so uh, for these extensive procedures, you know, whether it's a body lift or a thigh lift, or maybe it's a combined uh, procedure, as in this case, my patients spend minimum two nights at the recovery center. My nurses can watch you, make sure your vitals are okay, treat your pain, re-educate you, and also how to walk. <laughs>
to settle down. So most of the pain is typically isolated along the rectus muscle. Remember, I brought in that muscle by about four inches on this patient. So it's that tightness that you feel in the anterior abdominal wall. So things we can do for that one, we use a pain pump. It drips in lidocaine, it lasts longer than Expiril. So it's a much better uh, device than, uh, than Expiril. Number two, I inject that uh, Marcane into the rectus muscle. Remember those uh, syringes that I use to inject uh, the rectus muscle? Number three, we can give Demerol, which is a, a good, strong pain medication. We give the Demerol at only the recovery centers. We can never give that at home. That's done through an injection. Other things we can do is uh, Percocet through our pain uh, control. Those are administered through tablets. And then also Flexor or Cyclobenzaprine, which is a muscle relaxant, which helps that six-pack muscle to relax. And Percocet. Just what would you say your pain is, one through 10? Well, right now, I'm probably somewhere around a four or five, but it's mostly because of the up and down and the moving and everything. Like when I'm just sitting at home, it's usually very chill. There's no pain. Wow, that's good. Which is a lot of uncomfortable swelling. Yeah. yeah. It's very uncomfortable. Um, so the swelling is your body's normal reaction to surgery or trauma. That's what the body does. The body tries to rush uh, fluid and blood to the area and the consequence is swelling. So swelling is a normal part of the surgery. To minimize the swelling, we like elevation and compression. It feels very tight like, on my ribs and chest, and so it's hard to take deep breaths. So I've had to work real hard with those um, the breathing machines. You've been helping to clear my lungs and like give me able to take deeper breaths. So good. So that's a good point uh, with the plication of the muscle. Remember, we sutured that muscle together. With the tightening of the abdomen, with the binder and the garment that she wears, there's a lot of pressure on the abdomen. So all that pressure drives the diaphragm, the breathing muscle, up. So the diaphragm is a muscle that sort of comes across here. It's the bottom of your lungs. And when it goes down, you can take a deep breath. When it goes up, you exhale. So with all the tightening of the anterior abdominal wall, that muscle is driven up towards your head. So it's hard to take that deep breath. You actually have to conscientiously think of, I got to take a deep breath. So you take a deep breath and you drive that diaphragm down. So in the recovery center, we'll teach you how to take those good deep breaths. We actually have what's called an incentive which uh, makes you take those good deep breaths. You look amazing. Okay, this is the front. Yeah, okay, this is the back. You look at the I left. can't wait to see how you and heal. Me too. So we'll check in with you next week then. <laughs> so the purpleness that you see on the incision, that's the betadine that I use. That's a, a solution that I use to keep the incision nice and sterile. It's not blood, it's not scab, it's just betadine. Okay. <laughs> So that's sort of the orange that you see there is the betadine. Kind of right around here. Okay. okay. Deep breath in and out. Okay. Done. Oh, you did so good. Oh, you did so good. Yes. <laughs> This is my first solo doctor appointment. Traveling on chaperone today. <laughs> wow. Well, how are you feeling? How are you healing? Feeling really good. I'm sleeping really well, which is great. Like sleeping through the night, not taking any pain meds, not waking up in pain. Like it's been great. Doing stuff, getting kind of back to normal. That's amazing. And have you been looking at your body more? A little bit more. Like you still wear compression all the time, so it's hard to like see every now and then but it's it's really nice you know it's yes. really weird that that's that's yeah. my skin also that used to be way up here which, which is wild because yeah. that, that was above the belly button here oh, it's just it's kind of crazy to think about how much skin a person can have <laughs> right <laughs> You know? Yeah. It is wild. <laughs> Your belly button is like totally unfamiliar with the skin around it. It really is. I mean, it's, it's like, like I, I, can, I can see my belly button. It's like a new neighborhood. All that skin that was around the belly button is now gone. And uh, the skin that is currently around the new belly button is used to be way up near the uh, rib cage. Also, your belly button looks so cute. It's cute. It does look cute. With a little bit of scab still on this belly button, but we're about five weeks out here. Now, we take a lot of time and a lot of pride in creating belly buttons. 
What, one of the uh, belly buttons that I really don't like, it's called a starburst belly button. That's when a plastic surgeon will use uh, sutures uh, from the inside of the belly button to the outside. And you get these track marks of the belly button. It sort of looks like a sun because you get these lines where the uh, sutures used to be. So we take a lot of time putting the sutures inside the belly button. So you don't see any track marks on the outside of the belly button. All the suturing is done on the inside. Yeah, looks very natural, healing very well. Yes, we yes, can't wait to see that tiny, tiny incision line like that. Yeah. It's tiny. Once the redness is gone, that's going to be invisible. Yeah, yeah, that's really good. That's a great belly button. <laughs> so all the sutures are dissolvable uh, for the most part. Sometimes in the groin we use permanent sutures, like these blue ones that you see here. Just because it's an area with such high tension, uh, we like to use permanent sutures and then remove those at the six to eight week mark. Uh, but the rest of the sutures are all dissolvable, they fall out on their own, and then scabs, we kind of let them fall off on their own as well. It's important to, to let your body heal at the rate it needs to heal. And it's a lifetime solution, so it's one of those, when it's healed, we won't have to do this again. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, so it's like, it's okay to take this time, this time is the only time we'll have, and so we're going to keep moving on. patient here who is body by Katzen. How do you yeah. feel? I feel amazing. I've just got my last drain out and I'm so excited and, yeah, yeah, and yeah. everything looks incredible and I'm just so happy with the results. It's been three months now and it's it's been like a, a good recovery, like three months of work, but it's it's really amazing to see the results now. Super flat tummy and hips and buttocks and inner thighs. And remind us again, how much weight did you lose? 130 pounds. It's crazy. And how did you lose the weight? Uh, just through diet. diet. Just through lifestyle changes in my diet. And specifically in your diet, what did you get? So no gastric bypass here, no surgery on her stomach, just uh, diet and exercise. Got rid of flour and sugar. Flour and no sugar. flour, no sugar. Sugar is a little bit easier, but flour, that's really tough. It's you know, hard. It's gotta... a lot of whole fruits, whole vegetables, simple proteins, just a very simple food. So you got to really look at your labels if you want to get rid of flour. Mm -hmm. If you want to lose a lot of weight, sugar, absolutely. Even the fake sugars. Yes. Yeah, no sugars and no fake flours either. No, no almond flour, flour, no yeah. none of those. And all flour. And Mm -hmm. Yay, we're glad you, glad you lost the weight and glad we could help you out with that body lift and inner thigh lift. And uh, now go enjoy. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And what are you looking forward to most about being drain free and able to live, live in your new body? You know, I'm really excited to go exercise. Because oh. <laughs> now I don't have like skin bouncing around every time I want to go and, and yeah. do something that's been a real hindrance. Yeah. So. And I would say um, you start out slowly, mm -hmm. but you can start all that now. Yeah. So what kind of exercise do you like to do? I like to do dance exercise. Okay, like, you can do that. You can do that. Uh, maybe no extreme squats or splits or things like that. Mm -hmm. But you can you can go dance. Okay, you can do that. You can do stationary bike. You can do treadmill. Uh, but I think maybe not uh, doing maybe squats. Okay. Maybe a little bit too extreme right now. Uh, Stairmaster, if you can do that, you can take it slowly, but you can start to integrate all that into your routines. Awesome, and was everything worth it? Yes. Yeah. Every penny, every second, every amount of stress, everything, good. it was all worth it. Good, good, good. That's great, and do you want to give a shout out to anyone or a message to the world? Shout out to Brightline Eating, which is the food program I follow with no sugar and no flour. The support they give is amazing, and I mean, I wouldn't be where I am without them. Brightline so. Eating, and everybody that's Bright line. You Yay. Food. Yes, um, they're, it's so amazing. Two, yeah. <laughs> So many, so many people. People. Yeah. Good. Awesome. Okay, well, thank you so much. Thanks for letting us document your journey. Of course. And we'll catch up with you in a couple months. Yes. Okay. Alrighty, perfect. Yeah. All right. Good. So another happy uh, patient. She lost, again, a lot of weight uh, with her just diet, exercise, and with that weight loss, she couldn't get that skin snap back. Well, thank you guys so much. Thank you for the birthday wishes. Thank you. Thank you very much. And don't Hope you have a great day. And for your free consultation today only. Yep. And we'll see you guys later. Sounds good. Next see you Tuesday. Next Bye. Tuesday. Bye.